Hi friends, welcome back. Today we're looking at the KA Models F14. So gents, today looking at the KA Models F14, as I mentioned, this is one of the purchases I made during my recent Korea trip. I first noticed this inside Neighbor Hobby Shop and I was wondering if there was a brand new F14 by this unknown manufacturer and then uh, it became apparent that actually KA Models, what they've done in the background to this kit it's an, actually it's the Fujimi moulding of the F14 with some extra parts in. And uh, just looking at the box though, straight straight away we've got the two versions, a, a um, F14A from the uh, VF111 Sundowners and also 124 Gunfighters. Uh, this is, I think, the third kit. Yeah, the third kit they've released. Um, the other, the other two also being F14s. And what attracted me, of course, this model is the Fujimi kit. It, we're going back to about 1988, 89, to when that kit was released. And it really today, as you're going to see, it, it does hold its own. To In terms of 172nd, I think the top dog kit would have to be the Fine Molds F14D that was released as part of a magazine series with Model Art. So unless you've got all those magazines, you can't have the kit. But also, they did release their 14A. And then, of course, there's Hasegawa Acad Academy, etc. There's so many different F14s in 172 scale. But what really grabbed me was that it was the Fujimi kit. I, I can remember building this a long time ago. So let's open this up and have a look what's inside. It's quite a stout box actually inside there. Okay. I think that's everything out. Have a look at the instructions, see what they're like. See what information there is. Yeah, just a very. This is the actual. This is the Fujimi instructions. To be honest, it is quite straightforward. There's not that many parts. I'll just go over really how this model assembles, which is a cockpit tub that mounts to the rear section, which is the main fuselages. Main fuselages are top and a bottom for the F-14 to allow the wings to be uh, encompassed within that uh, fuselage section. One of the highlights of the Fujimi kit was the detail that was provided in the wings that allow the flap slats to be deployed. So you could have it in a, a, either a pre-launch configuration or also in flight. There actually is some pilots included. And another highlight was the uh, displayable engine that you could put as part of of the uh, of the model. The, the actual engines do not build up to be installed within the kit. Instead, you've got one that's mounted on a dolly for external display. Here's the two schemes. That sundowner scheme just grabs you every time or it certainly grabs me but also that gunfighters one again very attractive the paint call outs inside this kit are 
either Mr. Hobby, life colour, and some federal standards uh, references, and then of course colour names. So, really, Mr. Hobby, obviously, this is what Hasegawa uh, uh, Fujimi did with their instructions. There is a addendum to the instructions that also shows us how to place the masking seals for the canopy and for the uh, wheels landing gear. I'm just looking at the instructions as well where I've just noticed one part it says experts only and there's a piece of photo etch I believe this is to remove a panel here and then place that photo etch into that slot there maybe we can find out a little bit about that later on let's open up the bag see what, see what the kit's like first these are entirely new sprues that have been uh, totally commissioned by KA models and they are accurised wheels for the F14 and I'm trying to see if there is any difference between them let's just see there's 303, 304 it's just an identical set so you've got two sets and they have shown them sort of not bulge but flat and sort of the the wheels have got like a flat surface on them or the tyres do rather for the main landing gear the nose gear the nose gear is just the actual hub section so the rubber for that will be other plastic parts I'm just going to double check the instructions for that regarding KA models I don't know if they are available in Europe I obviously bought this at the show in Korea the big attraction of course being the price point of view which equated to something like $25 which is incredible as 172 F14s can be extremely pricey if you look at the F14s from Hasegawa they're sometimes asking $60 to $70 for, for that kit which is nothing that special let's see what the call out is for the nose gear if we can locate that see the main landing gear there with the parts caught called out where's the sub assembly well I'm struggling to find it to be honest I'm trying to see where the nose gear assembly is called out it just says 41 and 78 or 79 some optional parts there We'll have a look at the parts to see if we can work out what's going on there. With the the call outs for the for the main landing gear, they don't denote using this extra injection part which is 303, 304. Let's just have a look to see inside the instructions if there is any mention of that whatsoever. Well, there isn't, which is quite unusual because they have got the PE parts or close out there but I suppose it is fairly ob obvious that you're going to use these parts rather than what's provided let's compare them as we open up the sprues one single big bag hopefully we can rip that open yes we can Just going to take each sprue, hold them up, you can have a look at them. The Sparrow missiles are single parts, so there's actually no assembly required. The fins are already on them, as you can see. So are the sidewinders. The AIM 54C Sparrows require assembly. You get two types of exhaust, obviously a closed down configuration, full open afterburner effect. A 
there's the vertical stabs and the elevators you can see this is what I'm talking about with the detail uh, inside the nose landing gear bay all the details actually rendered within the part it's very nice the kit does not show its age and the panel lines on these are extremely fine very delicate and to scale which is something that you want to see you don't get that with some modern manufacturers airfix's new kits terrible big trench lines look at these they're absolutely perfect super fine obviously preserve them when you're painting this kit and then you've got all the detail and they even have some raised surfaces as well and then you can see that we have the flap set separate the transparencies do come in their own bag to protect them so you've got the main canopy and then I think landing gear lights and maybe some nav lights on that sprue there. Here is the engine for the external display and the dolly. Um, you get two, actually yeah you get two of them as well. And another set of nozzles. Need to be careful, I think this is going to be an can't tell you F14A. I don't know if it's F14A that's uh, with the upgraded engines like F14B, but um, might check the instructions on that part. But you have got another set of nozzles there. Okay, so these are parts of the fuselage, obviously, the, few, the section for the, for the um, pilots, the canopy, etc. here, which has got some cutouts that allows you to display the aircraft with the boarding ladders. And again, there's some detail within these undercarriage bays as well. The tricky part is really getting the joins on these part, the intake runs and up to the exhaust nozzle. nozzle. This has come off the sprue. This is single piece molding for the nose. And again, really super fine detail the vents are actually showing you know hollowed out panel lines are just so tight so well done the thing that is lacking on this kit is there's no riveting on it but you could add it or you could maybe just leave it as it is bearing in mind it is a 72 scale kit so that's the really the Fujimi components which are what you would buy in a Fujimi kit today if you could find one and the extras that are part and parcel remember for $25 you're getting this extra and these are parts from KA models specifically to just open this up Very fine photo etch, actually even has the nameplate as well with the, the turbofan engine, the TF30 Pratt & Whitney. So you can add that onto that um, display stand, which is part of the sprues. These are the canopy rails, I believe, or sills, but a compressor detail. These are the surrounds for the canopy with the mirrors. Need to check, I believe that is the yeah, it's the uh, radar. 
the work on that is really nice. These are, you know, really well rendered PE parts. This looks like, yeah, it's coloured photo etch, so to dress up your canopy, you've got coloured photo etch, which is going to be perfect, especially 72 scale. They've even got the detail for the pull handles for the ejection seats. Looks really good. This is the Pitot tube, which is in brass, I believe, or... I think it would be brass. So that's milled. And that is in really nice detail. And finally, we've got the die cut masks, which allow you to mask off the canopy, mask off the wheels. Makes life a lot easier. So you really are getting a real bonus from this kit. Let's just check for, for $25. Let's just hope this kit comes to Europe. I was so impressed to see this Fujimi kit come to life again. I, like I said, it's nostalgia for me, seeing something from from uh, you know the eighties coming back. The decals certainly look very good. They're very tight. They're very sharp. Uh, straight away, I want to do the sundowners I mean <laughs> can't resist really there is some low vis markings as well there I'm just gonna check that on the on the scheme of if the, if one is in low vis one's in high vis yeah it is it's actually yeah it's low vis insignia markings on this uh, VF111 scheme so a mixture of high and low vis it looks absolutely wonderful that is really exciting. I noticed that the gunfighters is, is you would have to paint the tail black and then you apply decals for the markings, which is straightforward to be honest. But um, yeah, that looks really good. These are all the markings for the AM54s for all the weapons fitment basically. Looks very really good. So that's the kit itself really hope it does come to Europe and there are more versions on the way there was uh, a special release at the show and KA models are an aftermarket company as well so they produce lots of aftermarket stuff and what interested me of course complementary to this F14 kit a nozzle a nozzle set um, this one is the opened I did of course want the, the closed but um, I got the opened one. Um, let's have a look inside this. Uh, I would say I was very impressed by the 3D renderings that they had, especially for stuff like F-15s with the turkey feathers uh, removed so you could see all the actuator detail. So there it is. This is really super crisp uh, looks fantastic just wish I got a few more now looking at that so that's KA models check them out they have got a website I certainly will be building this F14 at some stage I really can't wait to crack into it I hope you enjoy the video <laughs>